Scorpions. Not just a band that I loved in the 80s, but something that almost got into a sleeping bag. If you haven't watched the first video in this five-part video series, take a quick couple of minutes uh, to go right here and watch it before you watch the second video. So the second really big thing that I learned in Namibia in tracking elephants is that you have to know what it is that you're looking for. You have to be able to see and notice the signs. Okay, here is what an elephant track looks like. It's actually really subtle. So often during the tracking process, we'd be driving in the safari vehicle and they're like, yeah, we're, we're, we're following the elephant footprints. And I'm looking everywhere and I'm like, I, I don't see anything. They can be really, really subtle, but here's what we learned that we can learn from just knowing what a track looks like and what it means. When the elephant footprint is round, you know it's the front foot, and when it's oval or sort of oblong, it's actually the back foot. You can also tell what direction the elephant is traveling in because when the elephant pushes off, its toe kind of digs in to the sand. So we can see in, in this picture that the elephants are actually traveling towards the top of the screen. You can also tell how fast the elephants are moving. If the footprints are really close together, that means they're walking more slowly than if the footprints are further apart. You can also tell the time of day that they moved through. And when Herman the Tracker first said this, I was like, he's totally pulling our leg. Y'all, it is hot in Namibia. So elephants, during the day are not only looking for food and water, but they're looking for shade. So what he explained was, if the footprints are on the right side of the tree, you know they pass through in the morning, or if the footprints are on the left side of the tree, you know they pass through in the afternoon. I was like, head explosion. If you know what you're looking for, there's a lot of information there. And the poop. Oh my goodness. Were we ever obsessed with the poop? We're gonna get back to that in a future video and I bet you're counting down the minutes for that one. All right, so how does this relate to you and me? Number one, uh, sometimes the signs are super obvious. You get downsized or you get fired. Sometimes the signs are a little bit more subtle. Let's say, like this has happened to me before, I am, warming up a potential like new big client all signs are pointing to yes like i'm practically like this one's in the bag and then they cancel at the last minute and then it just goes dark and you're like what what the heck sometimes there could be an unexpected delay in a project in a timeline of something there could also be a, a chance encounter with somebody in a grocery store line. I have met some amazing people in airplanes. So just being able to notice the signs more often. Second thing, sometimes the signs are not out there. Sometimes the signs are internal. That sense of that sick, icky feeling in your stomach means a lot. There's a lot of information there. Or that sense of fluttering and excitement in our chest. Being able to see and feel the internal signs as well as being able to trust and follow what that information is telling us. And then the third thing is noticing coincidences and recurrences that happen. They can be really big, sometimes they're small. I've had this happen several times where, you know, you're, you're talking to somebody and they're like, oh, do you know so-and-so? And you're like, oh, no, we never met. And they're like, oh, you should really connect with them. And you're like, yeah, and then whatever, you get busy. And then like a week and a half later, you're having another conversation with another person that also brings up the same person's name that you should really talk to. And then you're like, huh, interesting. And then like two weeks later, the name will come up again. I mean, maybe I'm a little bit dense. I should do it after the second one, but you're like, okay, 
the universe is clearly giving me a sign uh, that I need to take action on. All right, so about that scorpion. One of the nights, we got a little bit of rain, and so one of our guides was just sleeping underneath one of the trucks. And while we were in Namibia, normally the weather was really great. It's warm. You could just sleep out under the stars. There aren't a lot of bugs. So he was just sort of drifting off when all of a sudden he just hears, and he turns on his headlamp and crawling right towards him and his sleeping bag is this. This disgusting scorpion, which then he's like, oh, again, it's the middle of the night, it's pitch black. I'll go find a Tupperware to put it in so that uh, everybody can enjoy it tomorrow morning. That's not the thought that I, I would have had. Uh, so this one is like one of three uh, scorpions that we encountered in our camp. So when I said there was no bugs, I kind of like, that's not a bug, that's freaking scary monster. All right, tune in to the next video where I share one of the next signs to be looking for on your journey. And I'm gonna tell you about a python.